last session of today, and we have another session of uh, boomerang and rectangles attack with two nice papers. So the first paper is automatic search of rectangle attacks on Feistel ciphers, application to warp by Virginie Lallemand, Marine Minier, and Loïc Rouquet. And Loïc will give the talk. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so today I will speak about our uh, new model to compute uh, rectangle attacks on uh, Feistel ciphers. So in the first part, I will uh, shortly introduce uh, differential cryptanalysis and uh, boomerang attacks. Then I will speak about our uh, uh, new model to compute uh, rectangle attacks, and I will uh, finish with a conclusion. So uh, that is a differential cryptanalysis. So the 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 method to compute uh, distinguishers in a differential cryptanalysis uh, is uh, to have uh, a plain text P1 to cipher it with uh, an encryption function uh, EK and uh, give us a, a cipher uh, C1. Then we choose a second plain text uh, P2, which is the result of uh, P1 XOR uh, an input difference uh, delta P. We cipher it also to obtain a C2. And uh, our objective is to compute what is the probability to obtain the output differences uh, delta C, knowing that we have an input uh, difference uh, delta P. So a variant of his uh, model was, uh, was designed by, by Wagner, which is um, uh, boomerang attacks. In the case of boomerang, we do not want to compute the probability to have a difference from alpha to beta, but uh, to have a difference from alpha uh, and then we uh, put an uh, output difference delta, and uh, we want to compute the probability that the, um, the decipher of the two uh, the two pairs of the pairs uh, C3 and C4 go back to alpha. So to compute the, to compute it, uh, we um, we separate the cipher into uh, two subfunctions, which are uh, E0k and uh, E1k. And we compute one upper trace, we go from alpha to beta, and one lower trace, we choose lambda and delta as differences. One variant of this attack is um, rectangle attacks. Instead of using uh, ciphering and deciphering, we always use uh, ciphers, ciphering functions. The problem with uh, this uh, representation in two trace is that uh, they can be uh, have uh, in incompatibilities between the differences that are uh, in the middle of the distinguisher. So sometimes we can have a better probability and sometimes we can have a, a worse probability than expected. So to counter this drawback, um, the sandwich attack was introduced and then we can compute the probability of the full uh, boomerang distinguisher by computing the probability of the upper uh, trail uh, distinguishers. So the probability uh, to go from alpha to beta. Then we compute the probability of the middle rounds, uh, which go from uh, beta to lambda and that go back to uh, beta. And we compute uh, the probability of uh, the lower part, which is from uh, lambda to de delta. Then we can uh, compute the overall probability by uh, multiplying uh, the probability of each part. The problem with uh, this representation is that the attacker needs to, um, to indicate how to cut the cipher into the three parts. So uh, Delon and the co-authors introduce a new kind of model that allow to compute the overall probability without uh, selecting uh, the rounds which belong to the upper, to the middle, and to the lower part. The model of, um, of uh, Delon and co-authors work in uh, two steps, and uh, we, are, we need to add uh, one more step, which is a key recovery to compute the attack complexity. So in the first step, uh, they compute uh, uh, the truncated differential characteristic, which is an abstraction of the problem. And in the second step, for each uh, truncated differential uh, boomerang, they compute uh, the instantiation of this uh, truncated uh, boomerang, and that uh, give uh, that gives um, the boomerang uh, probability. Once we have the boomerang distinguisher probability, we can uh, may uh, compute clustering analysis to uh, refine the probability of the distinguisher. 
And uh, we need to add uh, one uh, key recovery part to, uh, to be able to compute the attack complexity. So in the model of Delon and co-authors, uh, one uh, boomerang transition is represented by the following uh, variables. So we have uh, four uh, differences, which are alpha, lambda, uh, beta, and uh, delta. And uh, we have two traits, which are represented as uh, encryption and decryption. So in the encryption, uh, in the encryption trace, we have uh, three variables. So a uh, big delta indicates if the transition is uh, active uh, or not. 3x and 3sb uh, indicates if the input uh, differences uh, or the output differences of the transition need to be fixed or need to be known to, to compute the, the distinguisher of probability. We have the same variables, but for the lower case, which are uh, 3x uh, low, uh, big delta low, and uh, 3sb low. The problem is that the model of Delon and Al was designed to be used on the face on the SPN ciphers and was uh, applied to Skinny, but we want to use it to uh, to be able to compute a boomerang distinguisher on the face state network. So in the case of uh, SPN uh, ciphers, when we want to decipher the the messages, we need to inverse uh, if each uh, sub function of the ciphers. But in the case of the FaceNet networks, we always use the same uh, encryption function. We only uh, inverse the, the branches uh, between the subpart of the ciphers. And then uh, this changes the kind of uh, boomerang uh, transitions that we are able to use. So on the left, we have uh, the boomerang connectivity table that was designed for uh, SPN ciphers. And on the right, you have a uh, phase style boomerang connectivity uh, tables that are used, uh, that were designed for uh, uh, phase state networks. So you can see that on, on the left, you can define one, uh, one probability that use uh, only al alpha and uh, delta as uh, parameters. But if you are on the right, as you only use uh, SBOX in a directed uh, direction, you can uh, be able to compute uh, the probability uh, from uh, alpha and lambda, but you cannot use, uh, you cannot compute a probability that go from alpha to beta and go back to alpha. So we need to use uh, different uh, transitions that, uh, uh, that, then, uh, that was uh, defined for uh, SPN. So we changed the rules that uh, were designed in uh, the model of Delon and Al to match uh, the um, SPN uh, transition. And we adapt uh, them to only use uh, S boxes in a forward direction. And uh, that give us the new rules that are defined on the right. And uh, that are the rules that uh, are um, um, designed to match the phase tail conditions. Now I will speak about our new model uh, that uh, was applied to WARP. So what uh, WARP was uh, presented as at SAC uh, 2020 by uh, Banik and uh, co-authors. It was designed to be a, a compact hardware implementation. And uh, uh, you have the description of, on the cipher uh, just uh, here. So for each round, you have uh, one SBOX uh, function and uh, we add uh, uh, XOR between the state and the K. Then we XOR the two branches and for some branches, you add uh, one uh, constant for each round. So uh, for our model, we have the same uh, boomerang representation that was done by uh, the model of Delon and co-authors, and we have the same uh, search uh, steps, but we have some uh, differences. Uh, we add some uh, optimization uh, that was dedicated to warp to uh, improve the computation process. And we change the SBOX representation. So we change the SBOX rules and uh, the, uh, the transition tables to match the uh, phase tail uh, networks um, transition tables. And we also integrate uh, directly the attack complexity in the optimi optimization process. So um, how to compute the attack complexity? Uh, we need to add uh, some uh, rounds before and after our distinguisher to compute the attack complexity. And uh, for in the case of the attack of Zao and uh, co-authors, uh, you have the two uh, predominant terms of the attack complexity uh, that are uh, just here. 
So the first uh, parameter of these uh, two equations are S, which is the number of quartets that are required to match the boomerang uh, uh, distinguisher. We also have N, which is the number of bits of the block of the ciphers. We have NB, uh, ND, and NF that, uh, that can be computed as the number of rounds that are added before the distinguisher, the number of rounds of the distinguishers, and the number of rounds that are added after the distinguisher. P square, Q square, and R are the probability of uh, our boomerang distinguishers. And uh, you can uh, compute also uh, MB, which is the number of bits which uh, need to be guessed in the K, and RF, which is the number of bits uh, of the uh, ciphertext, which is uh, active, which are active. So um, we can uh, uh, directly integrate uh, this uh, kind of equation in the model to optimize uh, the overall uh, time complexity instead, instead of um, uh, improving only the distinguisher probability. So our new model works uh, uh, with uh, these steps. So in the first step, we compute um, the, the uh, abstraction of our attack complexity. So it is an approximation. And in the second step, we uh, improve our result, and uh, we are we ensure that um, the attack complexity given in the second step will be the best uh, uh, attack complexity that is um, uh, that is uh, computable by our model. And we can add uh, some uh, clustering analysis to refine the distinguisher uh, probability and to uh, improve the accuracy of our attack complexity. So now I will uh, show some results on uh, warp. So uh, to compute the distinguisher on warp, uh, we have the following results. So uh, until uh, 22 rounds, we can compute the distinguisher probability in less than uh, two days. But uh, the uh, number of days, the, no the, the time uh, grow uh, exponentially when we add uh, some rounds. But we see that for uh, 23 rounds, the so distinguisher is not uh, usable in practice since the uh, attacks um, uh, have a complexity higher than uh, the exhaust exhaustive uh, key search. We also test uh, the accuracy of uh, our model uh, by uh, evaluating the, um, experimentally the distinguisher probability of uh, our model. So in the model columns, you have the probability that was, uh, that was uh, computed by our model. And on the experimental column, you have the, the experimental evaluation of our distinguishers. And you see that we have uh, very close results. But uh, the more we add the rounds, the biggest the gap between our model approximation and uh, the experimental ev evaluation uh, uh, increased. So this model uh, allows us to uh, find a new uh, boomerang distinguisher on uh, uh, 23 rounds. This uh, boomerang distinguisher was uh, beaten by the model of Adipur, which was uh, presented uh, just af after this session. And uh, we compute, uh, we are also uh, able to compute why new uh, uh, rectangle attacks on uh, 26 rounds uh, of uh, uh, warp. We also apply our model to twine and L block S. And uh, for twine and L block S, we uh, find a close state to the art uh, distinguishers. So, to conclude, we provide a new automatic tool to compute the rectangle attacks. Uh, the model can be easily adapted to uh, over face net, uh, networks. Uh, the model can be overtaken by the model of Adipur when the clustering effect is important. But uh, even if we uh, made a concession of uh, distinguisher probability, uh, we can obtain uh, better attacks than uh, only optimizing uh, distinguisher probability. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Loic. We will take some questions. Do you have questions in the room in Kobe? Yes. Uh, hi, Luke. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, would you please tell us about the running time of your, of your tool to find a 23 round distinguisher for warp? Just a distinguisher, not the, the whole attack. What? Can you repeat? Yeah, the running time 
yeah. your tool to find a 23 round distinguisher? I think it's about uh, uh, two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Do we have more questions? So nobody here. Do we have questions in uh, Beijing maybe? I don't see any more question. I have a short question. Um, yeah. You didn't talk about the tools you use to model uh, the attack. I think you use constraint programming. Can you comment on how this compares to MIL or SAT? Because we've seen different papers using different type of tools. Uh, in fact, the, um, the, the model was done in uh, two steps. Uh, just uh, just uh, as said uh, here. So in the first step, we use uh, constraint programming, but the underlying uh, solver is uh, a SAT solver, which is a PCAT okay. SAT, uh, because uh, the model is uh, mainly uh, working on uh, Boolean variables. So uh, SAT uh, solver is uh, really dedicated uh, to, to this kind of constraints. And in the second step, we use uh, Shoko, which is a constraint programming solver. Uh, we use this tool because in the second step, we need to uh, um, to represent the S-box uh, probabilities. And um, this kind of uh, constraints are not uh, really um, well, uh, are not really well uh, implemented in the SAT or uh, MILP solvers. So in the, the case of uh, constraint programming, you have uh, constraint uh, tables that are really uh, dedicated uh, to this kind of uh, representation. That's why uh, we use a uh, set for uh, the first okay. step and a uh, CP for the second step. Okay, thank you. So if there are no more questions, we will move to the next talk. Thank you. Thank you. So the next uh, paper is titled Throwing Boomerangs into Feistel Structures, Application to Clefia, Warp, L-Block, L-Block S, and Twine. It's a paper by Hossein Adipour, Marcel Nageller, and Maria Eichleder, and the speaker will be Hossein. Thanks for introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the conference so far. Uh, I am Hossein Adipour from Graz University of Technology, and I'm very pleased to present our work entitled Throwing Boomerangs into Feistel Structures, which is a joint work with Marcel Nagala and Maria Ashlisida. So, uh, long story short, when we started this work in the first year of my PhD, there was no tool to find boomerang distinguishers for Feistel Cypher. So we decided to fill this gap and we managed to provide a very easy and uh, fast, uh, a very easy to use and fast method to find boomerang distinguishers for Feistel Cyphers. We applied it to several block ciphers such as Clefia, Warp, L-Block, and Toyn, and we got a series of improved results. Uh, to mention just a few, we improved the boomerang distinguishers of Warp by two rounds. We improved the boomerang distinguisher and boomerang attack on Clefia by one round. By the way, our method is not uh, limited to Feistel ciphers. It's essentially applicable to uh, any strongly aligned S-Block cipher, such as a skinny AES. So this is my uh, plan uh, for the rest of this talk. First of all, I will tell you which parameters are effective in the uh, probability of, uh, in the success probability of boomerang distinguisher. Then I will show you how we can create a constraint programming model to consider this uh, effective parameter into account and find a nearly optimal boomerang distinguisher. 
Then I will discuss about one of the applications of our tool uh, to warp and conclude the talk. So let's just start by the first part. Assume that you have two short differential uh, transitions for black cipher E with super high probabilities P and Q respectively, but they, are not, they cannot be linked because delta two and uh, nobla two are not the same. You cannot link them in a basic differential setting. In this case, boomerang distinguisher comes to help. And the core idea of boomerang distinguisher is actually combining these two short differentials in adaptively chosen plain text ciphertext setting. To do so, we encrypt a pair of plain text with difference delta one, then we modify the drive ciphertext by the same difference nobla three, then we decrypt them to drive the corresponding plain text, and we check if the difference between P3 and P4 is delta one or not. You see four differential transitions in this shape. If these uh, two same transitions at the top and two same transitions at the bottom. If the upper and lower differential transitions are statistically independent, the policy of getting delta one back on the other side is actually the multiplication of probabilities for these four differential transitions, which is P squared, Q squared. But these two trails are not independent in practice. That's why the idea of sandwich distinguisher was proposed. Uh, in sandwich distinguisher, we essentially put uh, an additional part in the middle of the distinguisher to model the dependency between upper and lower trail. In other words, a sandwich distinguisher is essentially composed of three uh, small distinguishers, two basic differential distinguishers at the top and bottom, and a small boomerang distinguisher in the middle, just like a sandwich. If the probability of two basic differential distinguishers at the top and bottom are P and Q respectively, and the probability of a small boomerang distinguisher in the middle B R, then the entire probability of sandwich distinguisher is P S squared Q S squared R. We have enough information about P and Q. We know that P uh, can be determined by the number of active S boxes in E0. Q can be determined by the number of active S boxes in E1. But uh, what about R? Let's take a look at the middle part in more detail. This shape represents the middle part of sandwich distinguisher when it includes only one S-box layer. It's the simplest case. Uh, as you can see, if the S-box in the middle of sandwich distinguisher is active in at most one of the upper or lower trail, then we can bypass it for free. The probability of boomerang transition over this S-box is one. If this S box is active in at most one of the upper and lower trails, you see, if delta is zero or nobla is zero, we can bypass it for free. It's called a ladder switch. It's some sort of super positive dependency between upper and lower trails. You have always heard about the negative side of dependency, but this is the positive side of dependency. This is for file subciphers. They are almost the same. The only difference is that the inverse of a box doesn't come into effect, but the ladder switch still works. If the input of a box is zero uh, in one of the upper or lower trail, we again uh, pass this as box for free. Uh, the probability of boomerang transition over this as box is one. So mm, I want to show you a very interesting example regarding the effect of ladder switch. This shape represents 11 rounds of a skinny. This trail, this differential trail, uh, which is colored in red, is shown to be impossible in PT22, the paper which was presented yesterday. This differential trail is also shown to be impossible because of dependency between round keys. You know, if you compute this probability using DDT framework, mm, you can say, okay, the probability should be, for example, two to the minus. 179. But if you go through the details and check the dependency between round keys, this differential trail showed to be impossible. But when we put them together, we get a boomerang distinguisher with probability one that works for any key, for any plain text, everywhere, anytime. Uh, because there is no overlap between the red and blue propagation over the S-box layer. Remember the ladder switch. All of the S boxes in this shape are active in at most one of the upper or lower trails. Theoretically, the probability should be one. I experimentally verified it by two to the n random keys or plain text. This probability is one. 
So what it means, uh, it has two, I think, um, lessons. The first lesson is uh, the impact of ladder switch. If you want to uh, find a bound for R, the polity of boomerang switch, a boomerang switch in the middle of sandwich distinguisher, it's enough to only count the number of common activist boxes between upper and lower trail. We should just, uh, we just, we should just ignore the S boxes which are active in uh, uh, only one of the upper or, or lower trays. And the second lesson is that uh, dependency issues in, the, in building block trails of boomerang switch has no impact on the validity of the resulting boomerang distinguisher. You see two uh, impossible trails yield a boomerang distinguisher with probability one. So let's recap this section. Uh, uh, we wanted to see the effective, we wanted to discuss about the effective parameter in the entire probability. In P squared, Q squared R formula, P is mostly determined by the number of activist boxes in E0. Q is mostly determined by the number of activist boxes in E1. And R is determined by the number of common activist box between the upper and lower propagation in the middle part. If we can create a constraint programming model that, count, uh, that counts the number of activist boxes in E0 and E1 and the number of common activist boxes in EM, we can have a rough estimation of probability. In addition, the cost of activist boxes in E0 and E1 is higher than the uh, cost of uh, common activist box in EM because of the exponent of PQ. The exponent of PQ in P squared, Q squared is two, but the exponent of R is one. So with that in mind, let me introduce our new method to search for boomerang distinction. It's pretty simple and fast enough. It has three main steps. The first step is uh, finding good truncated trails, which aims at minimizing the number of activist boxes in E0 and E1 and common activist box in EM. The second step is instantiating the discovered truncated trails with concrete differential trails. And lastly, when we have concrete differential trails in hand, we compute P and Q and R separately. We put them together to compute the entire probability of sandwich distinguisher. Let's take a, take a look at the first step in more detail. This is actually the most important step of our method. In this step, we divide a block cipher into three parts. We create a constraint programming model to encode the propagation of truncated trail in E0 and EM in forward direction. But when we switch from E0 to EM, uh, we switch from the propagation, uh, from the normal propagation to a propagation with probability one. We create another CP model to encode the propagation in E1 and EM in backward direction. Again, when we, when we propagate the propagation, when we propagate uh, the difference uh, through E1 as usual, we switch the propagation with probability one when we go to EM. We are also interested to encode uh, the common activist boxes in the middle part. Assume that U and L represents the activeness of S boxes in upper and lower trail. To detect the common activist boxes, we define an additional variable for each S box in the middle, the additional variable S, and then we include three inequalities for each S box in the middle. Accordingly, S is equal to one if and only if the corresponding S box is active in both upper and lower trail. So this way we can count the number of common activist box in the middle. Then we include an objective function to minimize the number of activist box in E0, E1, and the common activist box, the number of common activist box in the middle. We also assign some integer rates, uh, which are denoted by W0, WM, and W1 to adjust the probability. So uh, the, in, the next, in this next step, uh, when we have truncated trail, we instantiate the concrete differential trail for E0 and E1. However, after finding the concrete differential trails, we only fix the difference in four positions, namely in the input output of E0 and E1. When you fix the difference in the input output of E0 and E1, you can compute P and Q using uh, using the existing tools. And you, you can take the clustering effect into account because E0 and E1 are short enough. In addition, you have the input and output difference for the a small boomerang distinguisher in the middle. So you can compute its probability using VCT framework, FVCT framework, or you can do it experimentally. 
we do it, we did it ex mostly experimentally because the quality of EM is large enough in all of our applications and we can easily uh, compute its probability using experimental approach. Let's discuss about one of the applications of our uh, tool. This uh, simple comment represents the usage of our tool. It receives only three integer numbers, which specify the length of each part in sandwich distinguisher. For example, assume that you want to find a 23 round distinguisher for warp. Six, 10, seven is a good choice because the, full, the length of full diffusion for warp is 10. So it's best to choose the length of the middle part uh, to be 10. And running this command takes 20 seconds on a regular laptop. What you receive is the boomerang distinguisher, its specification, and a rough estimation of its probability. Uh, this shape represents the round function of warp. Uh, we applied our tool to warp. And in this animation, I want to show you how our method works. We propagate the difference in opposite way. As you can see, the dense part represents EM, and the, the sparse parts represents E0 and E1. Uh, here, the length of EM is 10. As you can see, only three sparks comes into effect. All of the other sparks in the middle are just uh, ineffective, you know? We can bypass all of them for free. And the quality of middle part is large enough to, to compute it experimentally. It's my, uh, 2 to the minus 4.558. You can just uh, experimentally um, measure it. You can compute it on a regular laptop. So uh, this is a summary of our results for warp. The best previous distinguisher co covered up to 21 round of warp, but we discovered a 23 round distinguisher, which again has a much higher probability. We improved its uh, distinguisher by two rounds. But take into account, running this command takes only 20 seconds on a regular laptop because our model is the simplest model. We don't go through the bits level because we believe for a strongly aligned cipher, you don't need to go to the, through the bits level. If you want to find a good boomerang distinguisher, a word-wise model is quite enough. And we come to the end of this talk, end of this talk where I would just like to thank you for your attention. Before I finish, let me just say that uh, our tool is publicly available in this GitHub repository, the Comeback repository. During this work, we also developed um, an open source tool, which is uh, SPAX Analyzer, and it can be used to encode the differential linear or integral properties of SPAX, and it can be used as a sub-module of SPAX class in SageMath. Thanks, I hope uh, it will be useful. Thank you, Hussein. Do we have uh, questions in the room? Yeah, thank you for your talk. Uh, so you said that for highly aligned cipher, you don't need to go to the bit level. Uh, can you explain this a bit more? I mean, yeah. thanks for your question. Um, let me see if I can find a picture, maybe this one fits well to this question. You know, mm, to find a to find a good boomerang distinguisher, you, what you need is actually um, uh, finding a good truncated trail, not a bitwise uh, differential trail. Because the ladder switch plays the wider road. It's the it's the strongest uh, switching effect in boomerang analysis. Uh, so if you take it into account, you can find a nearly optimum distinguisher. And it is uh, the thing that you can uh, model in a wordwise uh, MILP or constraint programming model. You don't need to go, go through the bit level. You don't need to model D DDT. It's just like uh, counting the number of common active boxes. It's also the case for Eskini, AES, Craft, Warp, uh, Clefia. I can mention some other strongly aligned black, black ciphers, but it's not suitable for present, gift, because they have bitwise operations, this doesn't work. But for a strongly aligned cipher, I think uh, according to previous experiences, for example, comparing this paper with the previous one or our FSE 22 paper, um, 
we got um, even better results in a shorter time. You know, it's it means uh, worldwide models are uh, sufficient for a strongly aligned black cipher. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, I have answered the question. Uh, I have a question regarding the time. Uh, so for example, uh, if you change the number of middle rounds, for example, from 10 to eight to six like this, then while keeping the overall number of rounds same, how does your time change for the tool? Okay, if I uh, understand correctly, you mean if we change the configuration, for example, here? Yeah, the number of middle rounds. Oh, yeah. While keeping the total number of rounds as same, is the time still same for your tool or it changes? Yeah. Uh, so let's review the method. It has it has three steps, right? The first step is finding truncated pattern. Then you instantiate it with concrete. These two steps, uh, the time for these two steps doesn't change. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you get the middle part. So for example, 10 rounds or less than or more than 10 rounds. But for the last step, when you want to compute its probability, if you, uh, if you, if you consider the middle part very long, what goes wrong is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, first of all, it's not necessary. You know, uh, I mean, I mean, the full diffusion of cipher gives us a good uh, indication for choosing the length of EM. If, uh, for example, for Eskini, the length of the full diffusion, I, as far as I remember, should be seven or six. If you choose the middle part more than six rounds, it's useless because dependency disappear after six or seven rounds. You don't need to choose the middle part. You know, do you remember we, we choose the middle part to model dependency? So if you choose it longer than six rounds, it's useless. But uh, another problem is that if you choose it too long, the probability of middle part cannot be computed experimentally. Even if you want to compute theoretically, the number of invoked parameters might be very high. And again, your program is stuck in the in the computation. So I would say I would say the running time changed for just the last step. When you want to compute the, the probability of uh, each uh, part. But for the two first steps, it doesn't change. Yeah. OK, thank you. You're welcome. So there's one more question. Thank you. So yeah. Uh, uh, my general question. So, so what about the uh, result uh, on Twine? Uh, is there any progress? Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't put them into the slides, but uh, uh, for for Clefia and Warp, we significantly, we significantly improved the previous results by a number of rounds. But for Twine L block, we just improved the probability, not the number of rounds. But I don't have the exact number numbers in my slides. Mm. Uh, but as far as I remember, the aspects of Toyn and Adblock was uh, uh, stronger against boomerang analysis. This is the uh, FPCT of Warp. Um, it it represents the the the, uh, the, the strengths of Sparks uh, against boomerang analysis. You see, there are, for example, two uh, uh, cases where you have a lot of large entries in the table. This is some sort of weakness because uh, if you choose two or A as the input of boomerang switch in the middle, you can make the most of a uh, clustering effect. You get a very high probability distinguisher, but for Toyn and Adblock, you cannot find such a <laughs> uh, unbiased uh, behavior. Nice. Yeah, as far as I remember, but sorry, if I didn't put the exact numbers for mm. Toyn and yeah, sure, sure. Okay. But you're welcome to refer to the paper. I think we have uh, discussed about uh, this uh, question in our paper. Thank Thanks you. for your question. Yeah. So one also small additional question. And the, so your attack is independent of the key schedule, right? It's a single key attack. And I mean, I mean that. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so that the key schedule doesn't come into effect because but there is there is no difference in the key schedule. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, our work is mostly focused on the boom on the distinguisher part, but it can be simply extended for the key recovery. I actually did it after publishing this work. I applied this method so on a skinny, as you can see, for example, in my first example here, 
this is just uh, one one of the outputs of the tool for Eskini. Yeah. I applied it to Eskini as I climbed it's applicable to any astronomy aligned black ciphers. But and we extended for key recovery as well. It's not uh, complete, but it's yeah. it it can so, be extended for key recovery. Okay, as as far as I know, uh, finding the distinguishers of the key schedule is not done. Uh, yeah, related. Yeah, so any yeah. any key schedule. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, as long as it's a single key distinguisher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Do we have some questions online or in Beijing? So I guess no more questions. Uh, I have maybe a short question. Um, you you have results on warp. You have a better uh, boomerang distinguisher than in the previous paper. Can you explain what is different in your work compared to their work? Is it because they optimize for an attack and you only optimize for a distinguisher or other other parameters? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they also try to find the best distinguishers beside finding that attack. But again, they. I think the problem is that uh, they tried to make the model very accurate. They modeled, they they went through the bit levels. When you go through the bit levels and you want to compute everything theoretically or uh, take the clustering phase into account, you know, all of these stuff, the model stops in the running time, in the in the running time, it never terminates. So you have to sacrifice the accuracy, you have to include some additional constraints and and uh, due to the, I think, uh, uh, complexity of the resulting model, I think that uh, maybe that's the reason that we got a best, better result because our model is simple and uh, it, as I mentioned, it it seems the award-wise model uh, is enough for because. Let me clarify this. Um, you know, for the middle part, uh, for the middle part, for example, here, if you want to compute the probability theoretically, assume that there are, in instead of three sparks, three common sparks, there are 10 common sparks in the middle. If you want to do it theoretically, it doesn't work. You can drive the formula, but when you want to evaluate this formula, the complexity could be two to the 50 to the 60, you cannot do it. So we start sacrificing the, the accuracy and it causes you to get a maybe worse result. Uh, but if you just, uh, I think um, uh, it's just the, the, the problem, uh, the, the efficiency versus accuracy problem. Yeah. Uh, Maybe the main reason is that we just compute the probability of middle part experimentally, and we get a maybe a more accurate, uh, more, okay. which is close, more accurate uh, probability, which is closer to the actual probability. If you want to estimate theoretically, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for a question. <laughs> so thank you. According to my understanding, you have you first built a byte uh, the mode in the byte level, right? In the byte level, uh, the truncated model. Oh. Then you find the compatible. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it, did you do find some cases where, uh, after you find a, a solution for the truncated model, then you cannot find a solution in the byte model. It in the bit be... level model. Is, did you find some cases in? Israel? Thanks for your very interesting question. It could be the case, but as far as I know, for many ciphers that have this issue, you can again put some constraints in the world level model to get rid of these in possible or truncated traits. For example, for AES, uh, if you, uh, you, you may find uh, some truncated traits that cannot never be uh, instantiated with real bitwise traits. But uh, as far as I know, for all, for uh, as far as I know, to the best of my knowledge, for most of the strongly aligned black ciphers, we can again put some additional constraints in the word level model to get rid of these impossible uh, trails, truncated trails. It can be handled, I would say. 
again in the word level in the word wise model we don't need to go through the bit level i myself uh no but i think in the previous papers it has been discussed yeah there it's possible i think yeah okay thank you so let's thanks uh Hussein again and all the speakers of this session oh you have want to answer <laughs> i just want to uh, add some extra information to the previous question so i think the main difference is, is that uh, when we compute the probability of the distinguisher we are actually computing the probably probability of a characteristic so we fix each uh, difference of uh, each word of the ciphers and when uh, in their work, as they are computing experimentally the probability of the distinguisher, they obtain a, a better approximation, a better evaluation of the probability, as we are not uh, computing the same things. So I think th there is uh, the main difference is uh, that uh, why they have a better probability th than uh, us. That's all. Thank you, Thank you Luke, for your explanation. Yeah. yeah. You made you. my life easier. <laughs> Okay, so now it's over, right? <laughs> so let's thank uh, all the speakers and uh, we can go to lunch. <laughs>